All right. Welcome, everyone. Thank you so much. Um, Brandy, thanks for the picture. That's an adorable picture. Um, thanks for coming, guys. Um, this is our student success skills workshop. Um, um, so we have a couple of our success coaches here today. Um, I know everyone here has kind of gone through this before, but just some housekeeping things. Um, there will be a survey I'll pop in the chat at the end of the session, um, help us give feedback to our wonderful presenters, and then that's also your entry for scholarships and giveaway fun, wonderful things. Um, and then if you guys have questions along the way, please feel free to pop them in the chat. And then um, if you guys want, if you want questions during, after, what's kind of the whenever. It all yeah. works. Okay. We're pretty relaxed. Okay. So if you guys are, you have questions, please feel free to pop them in the chat. Or if you so choose to unmute, go for it. Um, and then I will let you guys take it away. Awesome. Okay, so I am going to share my screen for our presentation. I guess I can go and start from the beginning. That might be beneficial. Let's see. From beginning. Okay, um, so like Jenna said, we are from the Office of Student Success here on campus. Um, and we're just gonna run through some academic success kinds of tips. Um, mostly time management, study skills kinds of stuff. Um, but first, we'll do some introductions. So my name is Chelsea Dye. I am the success coach for the College of Health Professions. Steph? All right, All right. guys, my name is Stephanie Stallings. I'm the success coach for the College of Engineering, pretty new to Wichita State, but the newest coach to the team, basically. A good addition. Um, and so as you guys see on the screen, um, we have an, a, a success coach for each academic college. So no matter your major, no matter which academic college you um, will be transferring into, you have a success coach who is there and dedicated to help you with academic success. Um, and I always explain success coaching as um, kind of like a safety net. So you've got a great support team on campus. Jenna and the Office for Adult Learning, super. Um, your academic advisors, perfect, awesome. Your faculty advisors who not only teach your classes but also sometimes help um, with advising but also are really knowledgeable about the field that you're going into. Um, a lot of our faculty on campus have served um, in the community, have actually gone out and worked um, and then come back and help teach and, and instruct. Um, and so with that, you've got a good team. We're kind of this in between that one helps you get connected to resources. So if you don't ever, um, or if you ever have a, a situation where you don't know where to go, you don't know what resource to get connected to, any of that, feel free to reach out to your success coach. Um, we <laughs> have gone through quite a bit of training um, to know all of the resources on campus. We do our absolute best to keep up with all of the resources on campus. Um, it's both a blessing to have so many um, resources on campus, but we also know it can be kind of overwhelming. And so if you ever just don't know where to go, don't know where to start, reach out to your success coach. Um, if we can't help you with it, we're going to find the location um, or whatever resource is needed. Um, and then additionally, I think you guys probably heard a little bit um, from the start when we were talking with Jenna, but one of the things that I love most about working here is that we've been able to build relationships across campus. And so the hope is that um, if I do have to refer you out to somewhere, um, I'm referring you to people I know across campus. I, a lot of times, try and give um, the name of someone. So I'll send you over to Jenna or I'll send you over um, to, we've got a couple of friends in financial aid. And so I like to refer my students to individual people within that so that I know that they're taken care of. Um, I know what it's like to kind of get the runaround um, and try and have to figure things out on your own. And so um, we really enjoy being able to build relationships across campus and hopefully get you the fastest help um, and the best help possible. So 
you can come to us for those um, kinds of things, or we also work with students for academic success skills. So everything that we present on today um, is stuff that you can come and talk to your success coach about individually. Um, I do a lot of study skills, time management, organization. Um, sometimes it's just having, you know, a person to talk to, um, to vent to, to, to kind of help you um, just figure out where you're at with things. And so um, I always tell people that we see students one time, maybe they just need connected to a resource. Other times I see students on a monthly basis, a weekly basis, every two weeks. Um, for the majority of our students, it's completely um, up to you if you want to come see us. It's not a requirement but you're more than welcome to. And then in those meetings, we'll also say, do you want a follow-up? Do you want an accountability um, appointment so that you know we just do check-ins? I have a lot of students who benefit from that because it's just someone checking up to make sure that everything's going well and, and those check-ins are good. So that's kind of um, the overview of success coaching. If you ever need anything, you'll be able to reach out. And I think our contact information is towards the end of the presentation as well. So um, one of the things that we first were thinking about whenever we were creating this presentation um, is really trying to figure out what kinds of information to share with you. Um, and one of the things that Stephanie and I discussed was kind of the missteps that students um, struggle with. Um, and after meeting with all of our students, it's pretty easy to kind of lump together some of these issues. And so um, the, these are just a couple of things that we see, but we see them fairly often. And they're things that if, if we kind of do an intervention or we help you build these skills um, and implement them early, you're hopefully not going to struggle as much. It's not going to be um, as big of a factor that you need to come and meet with someone to kind of figure things out. Um, and so one of those things is not communicating with your faculty or professors. Um, I always tell my students, build a relationship with your faculty. Um, and it doesn't have to be, you know, the faculty for um, your specific major. That's 110% helpful. I would highly suggest um, communicating and building relationships with your faculty that are in your major um, because they can serve as, um, a person who's gonna write a letter of recommendation. They've probably worked in the field, so they have good ideas about um, career pathways and things like that. But also sometimes we know life happens. Um, it's not that there's like some invisible thing, there's a door there that's, you know, life stuff stays out whenever it's time for academics. That's not even a thing. I will tell you 100%, not a thing. Um, and so the more, you're able to talk to your faculty members, your professors, the more you're able to build a relationship with them, um, it's gonna be easier to communicate if life does happen. Um, and a lot of our faculty are really flexible with students. They're um, empathetic and they're willing to work with you. And so I think that that's something that students are nervous about a lot. Um, but if you've built that relationship, that should make that communication easier. Um, and then, Another thing that we talk about is having that accountability partner. Um, one of the things that we've seen is that if you write down goals, you're much more likely um, to go forth and continue to work on them and then achieve them. Um, and so it doesn't have to be your success coach. It doesn't have to be Jenna. Um, find someone who is going to be like your support, your accountability buddy, someone that you're gonna have some of these conversations with because the stakes are a little bit higher whenever you share that with somebody. Like if I'm telling Stephanie, I've got this goal, if she's a good friend and we both have gone through quite a bit of schooling and so she's gonna hold me accountable for some of those things or just check in on them every once in a while. Um, and so communicate your goals, um, have that accountability, that support system. If you don't have somebody in your life serving in that role, don't hesitate to reach out to Jenna, myself, um, any of your success coaches, we're happy to help with that. Steph? Yep. So that brings us to the next part, guys. So the next thing that we see or kind of, you know, like she said, the missteps that we see quite often is not asking for help. Now, this kind of also falls in a little bit into speaking with your faculty and communicating with them, but there's other 
programs on campus that people don't even realize that we have that are available for you guys. One of the things that I learned, I like I mentioned, I'm pretty new to WSU, but what I've picked up on already right off the bat is that there's a lot of people here that are willing to help you guys. There's a lot of programs. Um, it can be overwhelming, but that's what the success coach is here for. We're here to you know, navigate and figure out who do you need? Do, do you need help in certain areas? Who can help you? So it's as simple as reaching out, asking for help, um, tutoring. If you're struggling with tutoring, we have the writing lab, the math lab. Um, the College of Engineering has geeks that's specific to our students and you know, helps them with their programs that we're in. So there's a lot of help on that side. Um, just like Chelsea mentioned, you know, we've got Jenna, um, we have one stop, you have a uh, care team. There's a lot of different departments that we work with that if it's not necessarily academic, like Chelsea mentioned, but there's other aspects of life that happen that you may need help with. And that's what we're here to do. That's really what we want you guys to understand and take from this that there's a lot of connections. And the great thing about WSU is their ability to provide that information very easily. It's as simple as typing it in the search bar in the website to maybe look for what you're looking for. Or again, it comes back to us, come ask us. Maybe you're not sure exactly where you may need the help from, but we're here to navigate that and help you figure it out basically. The other thing that pops up a lot, you guys, is time management or not managing your time wisely and efficiently. That you know boils down to a lot of things. It could be that your schedule is overwhelming. Is your schedule running you and you're not running your schedule? That's what comes up a lot of the time. Um, stretching out your time, wearing yourself too thin, not holding yourself accountable for what you need to get done. Um, that doesn't mean that life goes away. Just like Chelsea said, that doesn't mean that we're like, you're not, you can't work. We know you, you can't have a family. That's, that's not true for a lot of people. A lot of people have things that they have to fit into that and make work. But if you're not, taking time to look and manage what you have going on, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna get out of control and out of your hands basically. So that's kind of what we also do is helping you guys out with that and working through doing that better for yourself essentially. So that's what we're gonna kind of step into next here. So the first thing that we really want you guys to understand about managing your time and again, being in charge of your schedule is creating an ideal schedule for yourself. Um, in a moment, we're going to go to a slide that we're going to work on taking a look at setting up a schedule. That's what we can help you guys out with. We've got access to the information that we're, um, we're going to go over. But as success coaches, we have a lot of documents and forms and, and different ways to work that out with you. Um, it could be as simple as using a, a planner. I'm a planner person. I do love writing it down. So I've got like three planners. I have my work one, I got a personal one, and then I'm getting married next year, so I have a wedding one. So there, I, I'm everywhere with it. Some people prefer um, electronic. Google Calendar is amazing, you guys. It really works with a lot of different um, apps, and it wor really works with us in the technical age. You know, the Zoom world. Nobody, you know, we're not doing too much in person, and so that's a good way to use. Um, people, some people love whiteboards, so it's a matter of keeping track of your daily schedule um, in front of you on the whiteboard or near your study area. That's a great concept. Some other things that we really want to make sure that you're accounting for and taking a note of is scheduling your study halls. We know that you guys, right now it's a hybrid schedule, right? So we, we have an online class and what would have been a normal class time is no longer normal class time. So if you're sitting down for your scheduled time for your classes and your the online lectures or the recorded videos? Are you also scheduling study time? Are you setting aside different time that's scheduled for the actual homework or writing your papers? Or, you know, those are two different types of study that you study time or study halls that are different from class time. That's what we want you guys to be aware of. Now, what does that mean when we're thinking about scheduling all this time? Like I said earlier, that doesn't mean we forget about our own schedules, our, our private things that we have to take care of. Self-care, are you guys still putting sleep in? Are you eating properly? Are we you know, spending time with our loved ones that we can spend time with? Again, we're in a weird phase. You know, Luckily, we're starting to head out of that and it's getting a little bit more normal. But you know, take the time to still schedule what's important to you as long as it's not overtaking what you need to get done. Like a perfect example right now, guys, we're in this crunch time for finals, right? We're coming up on finals. So that means that maybe that Friday and Saturday night, we always go kind of out with friends and have a beer, you know, whatever. 
nobody drinks, but <laughs> let's pretend no one drinks, but you guys know what I mean. Like, don't, I understand that those are important, but when we, when our schedule starts changing or our priorities start changing, like right now, sometimes we have to adjust that and that's okay. Cause we know come May 13th, we're going to be kind of open free again. And that's when we can kind of get into that again. So really it's, like I said, it's really what works for you guys. It's what fits you. Everyone's schedule is different. Um, what's important to them is different. And that's what we as the success coaches can kind of help you through and show you how to work through that. So Chelsea, go ahead and go to the next one. So this is the academic um, success schedules that we were trying to, that we're going to, that we can work with you guys with. We have access to these. So if you're wanting a copy of this or to go through this, the success coaches can provide this for you. But what I want to do is, Chelsea, do you have to end yours first or? Yeah. All right. So I'm going to share my screen, guys, and I'm going to show you an example of my academic schedule, what it looked like when I was in school. So a year ago, I was getting my master's in law. Um, I have a master's in legal studies and in indigenous people's law. And I was living in California at the time. And I worked at a rehab where I worked 12 hour shifts, uh, three to four days a week, depending on the shift. And I lived by myself. I do not have children. So I did not have kids or daycare. Um, but this is an example of my schedule. So again, showing you guys of how it looks and how you can make it fit to you. There's several things that I wanna show you guys. So my typical work schedule was technically always Thursday through Saturday from 8 a.m. to 8.30, which you can see here. Wednesdays were weird. Sometimes I worked a 12 hour day. Sometimes I worked an eight hour day. It really just depended on how, which schedule it was. This is where I was technically doing a half day on Wednesdays, really, it's still an eight hour day. So as you guys can see, my schedule is really dedicated to work clearly during this, during this time, right? So my study schedule was very different than a typical Monday through Friday student. But again, we can all alter this to fit us. So what I would do on my days off, which as you can see, were mainly Monday, Tuesdays, and Sundays, that's when I dedicated after eating. Well, let me back up a little bit. Sleep's important to me, guys. I love sleep. <laughs> I'm a full eight hour person. If I don't get the full eight hours, and as you guys can see, this starts about 7 a.m. So, and it ends about midnight. So what you're seeing is I was still going to bed, you know, when I could, but sleep's important. I would sleep in on my days off. I do enjoy that. Get up and eat, exercise, take a walk, kind of get my brain refreshed, you know, kind of wake up. And because sometimes it felt like I didn't see the day because I'd be in the, the rehab with the kids um, at the time. And so, you know, doing that um, miscellaneous is sim as simple as it could be grocery shopping. It could be, you know, running errands. That's what my miscellaneous is. And then again, I would focus on, you know, eating, grabbing a lunch, something to buy. And then um, that's when I would get into class time. Again, you have to make it fit for you. Don't force something on yourself. That's not going to work for the type of person you are. If you're a get up at 7, 8, 7 a.m. in the morning and go running, that's what fits. That's what works for you. That's <laughs> just like I can see Chelsea's face. Um, studying and doing things in the morning doesn't work for me. I'm not a morning person. So my class and my lectures that I would watch would be right here, you know, two hour law lectures. And then I would take a break. I would go down to my dad's house in San Diego, go visit. I would maybe go to the beach at the time, um, do that what I needed. And then I would come back and I'm a night person. So studying at night worked for me. So again, I would put in those hours of studying. Another thing we want you guys to be aware of, and Chelsea's going to get into this in a little bit when she starts talking about the study skills. Studying for a good block of time worked for me. That doesn't work for everybody. That doesn't mean we want you guys to all do that. It just worked for me because it was a lot of reading and writing. And that takes, once you kind of get going, you're just ready to, you know, really get into it. And I could go for hours at a time once I really got into the subject. So that's what worked for me. And then again, I would put in my social time. I gave myself that free time to do what else I needed to do. Um, again, we really want you guys to account for your time. So miscellaneous down here and right here was driving home, grabbing something to eat after work. That's kind of, again, I didn't always do it at the same time. And then again, sleep. This really just meant I was reading at night. It wasn't like I was doing anything hardcore on work nights because it was a long day. And this is just a, a, a simple example of what, you know, could have worked for what worked for me. That doesn't mean you guys that we feel that this needs to be your semester commitment, the entire semester. It's going to change. This was just to give you guys an idea of how to set your up to show and 
be accountable for every hour of your day and show how time either can slip really quickly or to take a look at to realize how much time you can dedicate to something. Can I move things around? This is just an example of what we want you guys to understand about that and to use it. And again, this is something that we go over with you guys to show you, you know, how to hold yourself accountable for your day and what you're doing with your time, basically. All right, Chelsea, I'll unshare here. All right. Um, so one of the things that I will talk about with the ideal schedule, um, this is something that's non-judgmental. So no matter what your schedule looks like, no matter what your priorities are, if you want to come and sit down with your success coach, I think we're all pretty good at not judging how you spend your time. Um, I have a lot of students who will want to talk about time management um, and they'll fill theirs out and they'll bring it back into us. Um, and have kind of a conversation and I'll ask, well, why do you do this then? Um, and really just trying to look at how do we make it more efficient for you? Um, I've worked with a couple of students um, who are returning adult students and who have families. Um, and so trying to figure out like, can we meal prep so that the time that you are on campus, you get to stay on campus. I had a student who was a mom um, and her childcare was only whenever she was on campus. As soon as she came home, her childcare person was out. Um, and so then she had the kids and was handling everything else. And so she wanted to stay and study on campus, but couldn't because she didn't want to spend all of her money eating on campus. So we talked about just trying on her day off to meal prep something, to use Walmart um, pickup so that she didn't have to spend a whole lot of time grocery shopping she could swing by, didn't have to take the kids with her to go and do all of that, that kind of stuff. So you can go through um, and look, have us look at it. Um, and any suggestions that we make are just that. They're suggestions. You can always say, no, it is your life and you know your life best. Um, and so come and see us for that. Um, with the schedule, you don't have to fill everything out. Some people will do it with no color. Some people will do it all colored out. Um, Sometimes I like to put in all of the required things just to see where you have free time, because then that's something that we can be aware of. Um, but it's a great activity um, that kind of brings your awareness to how you're spending your time, where your time goes. Um, and then I highly encourage scheduling that study time um, just because a lot of times I see students jump from exam to exam um, and so with that, when they are doing that, there's like long periods where they're not touching the content in their other classes. So it always feels like they're behind. And so if we create those study halls um, and dedicate some of those, you don't have to dedicate all of them, um, but dedicate a few of them to each of your classes. That way, you know, you're at least spending some time with that content and staying caught up. And then the rest of the time is for what's due or what's next um, and things like that. But that is one issue that we also see is that jumping from exam to exam. So with a couple of these um, study techniques, um, one of the things is the Pomodoro technique. I have students who love this or hate this. Um, and so take it with a grain of salt. If you wanna try it, cool. Some people really love it. Um, and the people who I think really love it are people who tend to try and multitask a lot um, or they, um, get distracted and focus is kind of all over the place. Um, so with the Pomodoro technique, all you do is you sit down and you choose a task. So say that I'm going to watch the lecture videos for my class. Um, I'm going to take my phone and I'm gonna set my phone timer for 25 minutes. Um, and with that 25 minutes, I'm gonna put my phone on airplane mode. Um, I have some students who also do this with like their web browsers. They put them on lockdown so that they're not able to browse through a whole bunch of stuff. Um, but set that timer for 25 minutes and I'm gonna work on that task until my timer rings. When my timer rings, I'm gonna stop and take a short five minute break. Um, maybe I'm gonna go to the bathroom, grab something to drink, uh, respond to my text messages that I might've been missed in that 25 minutes. 
Um, I don't really care what you do in that break, but take that five minute break. And then you're gonna do that cycle a total of four times. If you're doing it for 25 minutes with five minute breaks, um, then you get about two hours of work done um, with that. I tell students, if your focus is not as great that day, or if it's stronger, flip it on either side. You can do 20 minutes, you can do 30 minutes, however long works for you. Um, and kind of trying some of those out might be beneficial. Um, but with that, if, you're, if you've gone through this and you've done the two hours and that's the time that you had planned, cool, go on with the rest of your life. If you are um, gonna dive back into it, I suggest at least a 15 to 30 minute break um, because what we see is that when you sit um, and force yourself to study for long periods of time, um, a lot of times our attitude isn't great with that. Um, I know that I just kind of feel like everything's dragging with that. Um, and I kind of detest what I'm doing. And so it's not the best mindset um, to be in whenever you're studying. But another thing with that timer going off, I know that it's just for an extended amount of time and I'm gonna have reward time that's coming up soon. Um, and so that can be something that's really beneficial and helpful. I do tell students that say that you're in this and like Stephanie, you get into the groove and things are going good. Don't feel like you have to stop. If your timer rings and you're in a good groove, don't feel like you have to stop. Eventually, if you come to a place where um, that momentum has kind of slowed, you're ready for a break, take a break whenever it's natural. You can always go back into um, one of those um, 25 minute kind of time frames. Um, the other thing I tell, yeah. A cycle. Oh, yep, cycle, thank you. <laughs> um, another thing that I tell people is that if you procrastinate, just tell yourself I have to do 25 minutes. After that, we can reassess where we're at. Um, worst case scenario, you did 25 minutes of work. You know, um, it's really easy to push things off, but just tell yourself to do that. A lot of times you might actually just end up into the groove and be good to go with that. So that's the Pomodoro technique. I am gonna have Stephanie serve as my guinea pig. I didn't think that I could ask any of y'all to be my guinea pigs. Um, but we're going to walk through, there's a couple of memory techniques, um, and the next one that we do, I might have to skip, just we'll see with time. Um, but the things that I tell people about, um, this method of it's a memorization technique. Um, and so it's called the chain method or the story method. And this method is really for things that are going to be sequential. Um, and so they're going to be in a specific order that you're trying to remember them. I highly suggest mnemonic devices, but this is also another good memory technique along with a mnemonic device. Um, so with this, you can see the list of words on the side. Um, and with this, in the book that I was reading, I did quite a bit of research on memory techniques because I work with nursing students and dental hygiene students. And um, so, in this book, this paragraph is there, but above it is a picture um, of all of this happening. It's kind of chaotic, um, but with that, what this memorization technique book is saying is that our minds remember visuals and pictures a lot better than we remember words. And so Stephanie, whenever you're reading this and whenever I read it back to you, I want you to listen to it, but I also want you to try and create like this the best mental picture that you can, okay? And our guests, y'all can also think about this and see if it works for you. So Stephanie, go ahead and read um, through it once and then I will read it back to you. Got it. All right, so an ant is holding a mobile phone. With the mobile phone, it makes a call to an elephant. The elephant is holding a paintbrush. With that brush, he is painting a poster. This poster is pasted on a tree. On top of the tree is Spider-Man from whose hands shoot out rainbow instead of a web. The rainbow is going into a mug from which a lot of biscuits are coming out of, out and falling into a lake. In the lake, there is a dragon from whose mouth clouds are coming out. On the cloud, there is an umbrella and which, I'm um, sorry, on which a shoe is placed. 
Okay. Awesome. Okay. So for everybody who's also watching, Stephanie has, I think I told her about this once before, but she has not seen these. Um, and so if you feel comfortable, you can close your eyes. I tend to do hand movements <laughs> and embellish a little bit on it. Um, and so watch, don't watch, whichever works best for you. But okay, Stephanie. So this little ant is holding a mobile phone. And with that mobile phone, he's making a call to an elephant. The elephant is holding a paintbrush like in his trunk. And with that brush, he is painting a poster. The poster is pasted on this gigantic tree. On top of the tree is Spider-Man, who's like shooting out web or shooting out rainbows instead of webs. The rainbow is then going into this mud and then lots of biscuits are coming out and they fall into this gigantic lake. Inside of that lake is a dragon who's puffing out clouds. And then on top of that cloud is an umbrella and on top of that umbrella is a shoe, okay? You feel com confident? Yes, I okay. hope. <laughs> so we're gonna test your recall. Okay. What is the ant holding? The ant is holding a, oh goodness. <laughs> Go through the story, you're good. Oh, the ant is holding a mobile phone. Correct. What is the elephant holding? The elephant's holding a paintbrush. Correct. What is the elephant painting? He is painting. It's on a tree, mm -hmm. but he's painting a, a mug. No, nope. <laughs> the elephant is painting. I don't remember. I don't remember. That. Okay. <laughs> so it's a poster. Oh, what okay. Poster? He's painting. Oh, okay. Talk about this. The poster yeah. is painted on what? The poster is painted on a tree. What's on top of the tree? On top of the tree is a cloud. No, I'm getting confused. A rainbow. Back through the story. <laughs> okay. The the ant is holding a mobile phone. Elephant is holding paintbrush and he's painting on a poster and on the poster he painted a tree no what's on, on top tree. of the tree yeah a mug no Why i feel like i have this mug <laughs> no so after the poster and on top of the tree is on top of the tree is the rain no spider-man spider-man Okay. And Spider Man is shooting out rainbows out of his hand. Of... Yes. And the there the rainbows are falling into a mug. Correct. And, yes. And then out of the mug, what happens? Out of the mug is shooting. Is that where biscuits are falling out of? Mm -hmm. And then then there's a lake. Mm -hmm. And What's in the lake? lake there's a dragon. Yes. And the dragon is. That's where he's shooting out something different, like biscuits or something. No, rain, uh, I don't know what's coming out of the dragon. Clouds. Okay. Oh, that's right. Clouds are coming out of the dragon. And on top of the clouds, there's an umbrella with a shoe on top of it. Perfect. <laughs> Great. So this was like two hot minutes of going through it. And it's really easy. It's better if you go through um, and create the story yourself because it's more salient to you. Um, but it's a great technique. The only problem with this one is, is that it definitely um, is sequential. And so that's why she struggled a little bit is whenever I'm skipping, it becomes a lot harder. And so if I've skipped things in there, she's going to have to fill that in with the story. But if you read through the story, then everything links. So thing one links to thing two, mm -hmm. thing two links to thing three. Thing one will not necessarily get you to thing three. So this is for something that is definitely sequential. Um, there's all the answers. So there's another method, and I'm not going to have um, Stephanie do it just because we're short on time. Um, but this is another one that unless you do it, it's hard to wrap your mind around. Um, the method of loci is also known as the memory palace. And so this is a good one. If you like my supervisor said that she uses it for her grocery list, 
because she can imagine the grocery store and the aisles in her head. Um, and I've also seen it for like, if you're trying to remember specific things for a speech, so bullet points. Um, or if you have like for my nursing students, a list of medications, mnemonic devices are great for that, but also um, you can do it just for just about any list. But with this, where's that? There it is. Um, so with the memory palace, what you do is you think of a location that you know really well. And so with that, you're going to walk through that route or that location. So it can be a route that you drive, can be a school, the grocery store. I tend to use um, my childhood home. Um, we lived in it for 20 years. I can walk through it back, backwards and forwards, blindfolded, all of that kind of stuff. And so what happens is you would take each of these words. And so as I go through the words, I, you would read them off, I would read them off, car seat. And then you're going, going to make a visual image of that and you're going to drop that on your route through your house or through your grocery store where you're walking. Um, and so as you go through, I would drop a car seat um, right in the entryway of the door um, from where we walk in. And then I'm going to set some bananas on the washing machine and then I'm going to go into my kitchen and I'm going to put grapes on the stovetop and I'm going to put a hamburger in the sink, which grosses me out. Um, but as you go, you drop this visual representation of what you're trying to remember. Um, and then whenever it becomes time to go back through and recall these, you're going to go back through, but you're going to pick these things up. And it doesn't matter if you miss one, like it's not great. We want you to remember all of them. Um, but if you miss one, your next thing is not tied to that previous one. So it's just a bullet point. You're picking all of those up. Um, we, I told Stephanie that we did this with my TA when I was in my undergrad in one of my psych classes. Um, we did our first list where he just read it through to us um, and people were getting like three to five words out of 20. Um, and then whenever we did this and he actually had us go through and imagine our locations and drop them all down, we were getting, I, I don't think anybody got less than 19 um, out of 20. So it's, just kind of mind blowing. It's really hard to wrap your mind around unless you actually go through and do it. If you wanna do that, come see one of your success coaches. We can help you through that. Um, with those study things um, and with memorization techniques, one of the things that I do help tell people is that um, recall is not the same as repetition. So just because you read through your notes again just because you read through your text or you write things down, that's repetition um, and that's good. It definitely will help you. But recall, I always talk about my memory being like um, uh, one of those file cabinets. And so as I create a memory, it gets placed in my brain. And then as things go on, it gets pushed further back in my brain. And so I need to physically bring it forward in my mind over and over again so that it doesn't get pushed too far back there. And so that recall, what it actually does with your brain is it's myelinating that pathway so that you have a quick path um, from wherever it's located in your brain and your memory and it pulls it forward. And so that's what's gonna make you quicker whenever it's time for your test um, to answer those things. And it's also gonna make you more confident um, you know that material. A lot of times people get nervous and I tell them that material is in your brain. We just have to work on bringing it forward faster. Um, so if you wanna know things about memory techniques, come see me, we'll hang out. Um, we do have a couple of important takeaways that Stephanie is gonna cover. And then I think we have questions after this. All right, guys. So like Chelsea said, you know, there's, or like we have both said really, there's a lot that we can do for you, but there's also, again, we're that connecting factor if we need to. So really the thing that I really want to hit on is come and ask for help. It really does literally boil down to asking for it, being willing to be open. Um, it Maybe if you're, like the list says, speak out to your, speak to your, ask your success coach, ask your faculty member, um, ask the learning center, but it's also the idea of being open to communication and, and needing that comfort level to be able to do so. 
So if it's as simple as, hey, you've got a, a professor or faculty member that you don't feel you feel comfortable communicating with, or you don't know how to express, you know, what you're worried about or what you're concerned about, that's something that we can help you out with. So it's a matter of coming to the coach and asking for that, and then us helping you build that relationship or setting up that email or that letter in order to communicate with the professor that you need to communicate with. Um, once you have a relationship with us, with your success coach, we can connect you with other offices if it's not something that you're fully confident in wanting to go and work with. Maybe you know you may need to speak with someone in care team, but you're not sure who, how to approach it or um, who to talk to. We can get you through that as long as you've communicated with us that you know that's something that you're concerned about. Um, we're here to help you out with the goals that you have set for yourself to accomplish those goals. It really literally boils down to asking and communicating you know, what you need. That's really what we want you guys to take away from this is that that's what we're here for. Just like it says literally at the bottom, just ask, be, be open to asking. It's, it's really that simple. I mean, you may, you may come in here and think that it's a dumb question. It's, it never is. There's, you know, we're all, we all don't understand some, some things sometimes and you have to be willing to, you know, be open and ask and be vulnerable enough to be able to do that. And that's a big part of it. And that's what we're here for. That's we're, we are literally here to support you guys. That's what it is. It's definitely much harder. I've had a couple of students who have checked out due to life stuff or just being overwhelmed. Mental health is always um, kind of a struggle, especially whenever the stress levels rise. Um, and so as soon as you start to feel concern, um, reach out and ask. We're happy to help you at any point throughout the semester, um, but it is, a little bit harder. We don't have as many options whenever it comes to midterms or past midterms. Um, I have worked with faculty before and worked with a student who had some life stuff happen, um, had some mental health kinds of stuff happen, depression, um, and they just weren't attending class. They didn't communicate a whole lot. But whenever we had that conversation with their faculty member and asked, is there any way that we can still, you know, complete this semester, that we can still kind of figure things out? their faculty member worked with us. Um, that's another thing that care team can help with. Uh, and so ask at any time, but it's it works out better for you if you ask earlier um, as soon as you need that help. So with that, do y'all have any questions? We gave you a lot of information. <laughs> that was awesome. Thank you guys so much for sharing those tips and tricks and just the information as well. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the link in the chat. Um, Perfect. Please guys, if you have questions, please let us know. Um, <clears throat> would you guys mind um, dropping your contact information into the chat so that yeah. so we have it? Um, that, was, that was awesome. I think my favorite quote will forever be, I don't know what's coming out of the dragon. <laughs> That's so, so true. I'm um, um, right um, now. I didn't even. I think I was trying to like get her to do it so much that I was like, "You do. You know what yeah, comes out of the At least that. I was. You now. You guys know that I did not know what that was. <laughs> yeah, there was no. I didn't give her any prep beforehand. Yeah. So, but I also don't give my students any prep beforehand. <laughs> that makes it. It's all even. Wow. No, I'm going to stop the recording.